Hey, what's up guys? It's Tips. So a couple of months back, I did a video where I took each of the classes in vanilla and compared them on a DPS and HPS basis in Molten Core. A lot of you guys requested that I do something similar for each individual raid tier. So today I decided instead of going directly into BWL, why don't we go into the final raid of vanilla to see the exact polar opposite of Molten Core, and that is Nax Ramus. Now, as you probably already know, Naxxramas was the final raid in vanilla, so it's the final opportunity for DPS to gear up and get the best gear possible. So the DPS in this raid is pretty much the max DPS you are going to see in vanilla with that gear. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So just like last time, we have in front of us here the top 30 parses for warriors in Nax during vanilla. And as you can see, if we take the averages of all these 30 parses, we get approximately 869.19 DPS for warriors in Nax. Remember, if you watched my previous video, you would know that warriors only do 480 DPS in Molten Core. So it's a pretty significant bump, about double the damage, actually a little less than double the damage. And uh, while that might seem like a lot, remember, Naxxramas is the last raid in vanilla. If you compare that to, let's just say, Legion, for example, and Taurus versus the first raid in Legion, which I believe was Emerald Nightmare, the power difference, I think, by the end of Legion was something like four to five times the amount. So in vanilla, there certainly was a power creep. You got a lot stronger throughout the expansion, but the strength gain was a lot more manageable and not nearly as severe as we've seen in recent WoW expansions. And I actually think that's really, really cool. I think it's great design. Let's move on to the next class. Next up, we have the Rogues, who are clocking in at an impressive 783 DPS. Very powerful, slightly less than Warriors. Warriors are the kings of melee DPS and vanilla overall, I think. But pretty much neck and neck, right about there. And when you look at the top end damage for Rogues, the highest parser, it's pretty much just a couple of percent off from the Warriors. So they're very, very close, very powerful melee DPS and vanilla and a lot more powerful than they were in Naxxramas, where they were parsing an average of 430 DPS. So again, like Warriors, a little less than double the amount throughout the expansion. Again, I think that's really cool. It's not that big of a power creep. But once you do get deep into Naxxramas, there is a significant power curve upwards. I mean, Nax, the weapons in Nax are a lot more powerful than the weapons in Molten Core. If we got one more raid tier after Nax, the power disparity between a fresh 60 and a fully progressed 60 would just be way too much and it would no longer feel like vanilla where a lot of classes, even fresh 60s, can feel like they can contribute. So it's fine as it is. Rogues are still dominant in Nax Ramus. They do a great job. And overall, great DPS to bring to a raid. Now moving on to a class that I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be excited to see represented in the DPS charts this time, Priest. Yes, this time around, there is Priest representation in Naxxramas. A big part of that has to do with patch 1.7, where the debuff slot limit increases from 8 to 16, making Shadow Priests a little bit more viable, obviously. And you do see Priest representation in Nax. Here, they're doing about an average of 360 DPS, which is admittedly a lot less than Warriors. I mean, that's less than Warriors were doing in Molten Core, which is not very good. A lot less than Rogues, and unfortunately, Priests are on the lowest end of the DPS spectrum in Naxxramas. But again, Priests, one of the reasons why they're brought to raise from a DPS standpoint is that shadow weaving is the ability to buff up Warlocks a little bit more. So they do have utility and obviously Priests, tremendous amount of healing toolkits and stuff like that. Uh, they are valuable in raids, but from a pure DPS standpoint, they do not output that much individually. Although, as we said already, they do benefit a lot of other classes. So Priests in Naxxramas' DPS, you betcha. Not on the top, but... It's fine. And speaking of underpowered DPS classes, next up we have the Rhett Paladin, which is a pretty big fan favorite. I know a lot of you guys plan on rolling Rhett for vanilla. A lot of you guys have watched S Fan's videos, his Warriors of the Light video, and you're very excited to swing the light as he does, I think. You think that Paladins with their strength against Undead would do really well in Nax, but unfortunately that is just not the case. And like Priests, they come in pretty much on the tail end of the spectrum. In fact, probably all the way on the bottom. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that many parses to go off of because very few guilds actually bring rep paladins into Naxxramas because the requirements are so high. Based on the data we have here, the few parses we have here, it looks like paladins are just way, way too low on the spectrum, unfortunately. And as a result, you might not see a lot of them in Nax, unfortunately. Most of the paladins you will see will obviously be holy, but um, a little bit sad, around 320, 330 DPS. But... Uh, Hey, Rep Pryo. 
but not all classes are that unlucky. In fact, some are far luckier than others. And in this case, because we went with the lowest DPS previously, we're going to go into the highest DPS class in next Ramus. And that, of course, is the Mage. Now, Mages absolutely tear it up in Nax. I mean, they literally, literally torch the DPS meters. That's because a lot of them are going fire. A lot of them are abusing the Ignite mechanic. And uh, obviously, it yields some tremendous numbers. And Mages average around 1,027 DPS in Nax based on these parses, which is a huge upgrade from the 360 DPS they were doing in Molten Core. The problem with Molten Core, of course, is that the vast majority of bosses in there are resistant to fire. So Mages can't roll fire in Molten Core, but they can in AQ, they can in Nax, and they do a tremendous amount of damage, as you can see. And yes, Mages do lead the pack. They do dethrone Warriors in Nax Ramus, but a lot of that has to do with the mechanics of the fight themselves. And that's something we'll talk about when we take a look at the graphs. But for now, Mages, killer in Nax, guys. Absolutely killer. And speaking of killer, let's talk about the most improved class that absolutely kills it in Nax Ramus, and that is the Warlock. Now, aside from Rep Paladins and Shadow Priests, which weren't really represented in Molten Core, Warlocks are the most improved proportionately out of any of the other classes on this list. And that is because Warlocks do approximately 265 average DPS in Molten Core, whereas in Nax, they do about 742 DPS, which is, I think, more than triple the amount that they did in Molten Core, if I'm getting my math right. Maybe I'm not. Sorry, it's a little bit early in the morning. But it's very close to triple that amount, uh, more than mages even, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on if you're rolling a Warlock. But uh, yeah, they do a tremendous amount of damage. They scale very well in uh, Nax Ramus. They don't have to worry about threat quite as much in Nax for a lot of reasons. But uh, yeah, Warlocks, another great range DPS class. 700 DPS, very close to the rogues. Uh, definitely a great pick for any raid group, absolutely. But as great as scaling is for Warlocks and Vanilla, unfortunately for Hunters, it's quite the opposite. It's actually really sad, unfortunately. Hunters do not do that much more DPS in Naxxramas that they do in Molten Core. In fact, uh, in Molten Core, they only do about 363 average DPS. In Naxxramas, that's barely upgraded at 535 DPS, according to these average parses right here, which is pretty sad, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot of reasons why Hunters don't really scale very well. It has to do with a lot of their abilities and some of their talents. But uh, unfortunately, Hunters, man, they're only like 40% stronger by the end of Next Ramus than they were in Molten Core, which is really sad because they were such a dominant force in MC, and they do really well in BWL too. They do do really well in BWL. But as soon as you hit AQ and Nax, Hunters just don't improve that much, unfortunately. Um, they're still brought to raids for a lot of reasons. They still have a lot of utility. And uh, of course, you do want to bring a couple of Hunters for things like defrenzing and stuff like that. But unfortunately, from a pure power growth perspective, Hunter is one of the weakest classes in vanilla. I mean, it's just, it sucks. They only grow like 30 to 40% uh, in the raid environment, which is sad. But hey, Hunters get a lot of things easy too, so they don't really have a cause to complain. But let's move on. To the Druids, by the way, a class you probably didn't expect to see me mention here. Um, feral druids in vanilla are surprisingly a thing. I mean, they weren't really a thing in core molten core progression, and they probably won't be a thing in Nax progression either. But assuming you've cleared Nax a couple of times, um, or maybe even progression, depending on what kind of guild you're running, uh, you might see a couple of feral druids in your group if they know what they're doing. And believe it or not, based on the parses available here, they do more DPS than rep paladins. So uh, not that bad, feral druids, I guess. A lot weaker than the other melee classes, unfortunately, which is why they're not really brought to high-end content. But hey, they beat rep paladins here, so better than nothing. So when we line up all the classes side by side on this graph here, we see that mage is obviously the most dominant class when it comes to DPS and Nax Ramus. Paladin, unfortunately, a little bit weaker. And dare I say it, Warrior even, unfortunately, uh, a little bit weaker. They lost their number one spot in Molten Core. And I think that primarily has to do with the fact that Naxxramas has a lot of movement intensive fights, especially for melee and vanilla. Like, you really have to move a lot in Naxxramas on a lot of different fights, uh, admittedly. And I think that's one of the reasons why they take a little bit of a DPS hit here. And of course, on top of the fact that mages basically have an exploitable mechanic they can use in Nax, um, it, is, it is a reason why the melee does lag behind a little bit. But mages, congratulations. Rep paladins, I'm sorry. Um, but don't worry, paladins, because you do make it up in the healing portion of Naxxramas. 
which is what we're going to talk about right now. Now, I do want to mention a criticism that I received in my last video during this section, a valid one, if I may add, and that is the fact that HPS, heals per second, is not the same thing as effective healing. And some classes, when you calculate their entire effective healing, they are more powerful than others, obviously. Plus, when you take into account the buffs and utility that class provide, it makes it very hard for HPS to really matter. But for completion's sake, I will include the HPS rankings just because I did the same thing for DPS. But again, don't let this discourage you, especially if you're a Shaman or a Druid player. This doesn't necessarily mean that your class is worse at healing. It just means that pure HPS, you do a little bit less. But hey, you make up for it with other buffs and utility and stuff like that. So don't worry about it too much. But with that said, let's get started here. Coming in in fourth place is the Shaman. Uh, unfortunately. But like I said, Shaman bring a tremendous amount of utility to the raids. Their HPS is approximately 318 here, so a little bit lower than the other classes. But Shaman, they have Chain Heal, great AoE healing, they have all of their totems. There's a million reasons to bring Shamans to a raid. Don't get discouraged here, guys. Vanilla is not really about topping the HPS meters. Like, it's just not relevant at all. So don't worry about it too much. You still bring Wind Fury totem, so you always have a special place in my heart. In third place, we have the Druids, who clock in at 326 HPS on average, looking at the top 30 parses, of course. Druids, another class with a lot of utility, battle reses, fairy fires, innervates. Um, Druids can provide a lot to a raid, and uh, again, they're on the lower side of the HPS, but they do have very, very strong spot healing. They, ha they have very strong hots, and um, they do have a place in any raid albeit not quite as popular as the next two classes, which we're going to talk about right now. The runner-up for the HPS rankings in Naxxramas is the Priest class. That is right, the Priest class. Uh, Priest's obviously an incredibly powerful healer. Some might argue the most powerful healer in vanilla overall. Um, a great class uh, for so many reasons. You bring a lot of different types of healing. You bring hots. You bring strong, you know, single target heals. You bring shields. You bring power infusion. A great class overall, probably the best healing class in the game, but technically in HPS, they do come up a little bit short compared to Paladins. Priests, great healer, all the way from Molten Core to Naxxramas. You'll need them no matter what. And finally, some poetic justice for our Paladin friends. The lowest DPS classes in Naxxramas are the best in terms of HPS in Naxxramas too. So Paladins get a little bit of retribution here, no pun intended. Great tank healers, great single target heals. Paladins have a better time keeping up with mana as well in Naxxramas too. And yeah, I mean, all the undead there, right? You got to use them for something. So congratulations to the Paladins. Again, guys, HPS rankings, not nearly as important as DPS rankings, so take it with a grain of salt. But uh, hey, Paladins, you've got something to brag about. But don't let these rankings discourage you if you're planning on playing a specific class, because at the end of the day, guys, every single class in vanilla has a role and has something to offer a group. It doesn't matter if you're a druid, if you're a paladin, if you're whatever, you are going to bring value for your group no matter what. So just because you're coming up short on these rankings doesn't mean nobody's going to want you in a group. Pick the class you want to play. That's the most important thing. Classic WoW is all about fun. Don't pick a class just because it's on the top of the damage meters or on top of the healing meters. Pick a class that you're going to enjoy because remember, guys, Classic WoW goes a pretty long way. And um, if you're going to level 1 to 60, you're going to spend two, 300 hours doing that. Might as well do that with a class you're going to really like playing. But that's it for me today, and thank you for watching the video, guys. If you liked what you saw, sub it up and stick around because we got more coming. For more Classic WoW conversation and discussion, check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby. And if you like my content and want to support the channel, I'll leave the Patreon link in the description for you too. But aside from that, have a wonderful day, fellas. See you guys on Twitch, and as always, tips out, baby!